Remember when SUV coupes were a novelty? BMW likes to tell us that the X6, from 2007, was actually the first, though I enjoy reminding them of the 2006 Sanyong Action. Anyway, the X6 is now entering its third generation, and is homing in on half a million global sales. As before, it's a riff on the contemporary X5. So how does it distinguish itself? Mostly by the visual language. All panels are different, and even the windscreen lays back at a shallower angle. The gradient of its roof and the bulge of its hips are clear differences. The cooling vents and exhaust outlets employ stylistic tricks to affect to be even bigger than the already oversized actuality. Back in 1925 Citroën emphasized its Frenchness by putting its name in giant illuminated letters on the Eiffel Tower. Ferrari's museum at Enzo's birthplace in Modena has a roof deliberately shaped like a giant bonnet because engines were at his route. In 1972 BMW built its HQ in the shape of four cylinders, freighted with the same symbolism of combustion. These days BMW's messaging is all about grills. Bigger, angrier grills. And just in case you had managed not to notice these colossal frontal barbecue bars, the X6 has something called Iconic Glow Kidney, an optional set of LEDs that illuminate the grills as you drive along at night. In practical terms versus the X5, the roof is lowered but it's still a five-seater, and actually barely less roomy even in the back. We don't think it's as ugly as the last X6. Power choice is straightforward, a six-cylinder diesel with the two fuels, 40i and 30d, and then more powerful ones with a few M chassis mods, M50i and M50d. That hot petrol is a V8, the diesel a straight six with, count M, four turbochargers. All X6s have adaptive dampers. The 40i and 30d have air suspension, and four-wheel steering is optional. The MS are on steel springs, with 4WS as standard and active anti-roll optional. We tested the M50i with that fitted. For the first time in an X6, you can spec an off-road pack on the air spring cars. It adds underbody protection and off-road modes, plus a mechanical difference lock. So the critters of the wilderness can also appreciate your raffish style. Logical appraisal parted company with big crossover coupes a long time ago. It's true the X6 would be an easy car to own. But that applies to an X5, which is even roomier and more versatile. Also, once you put a few options onto the X6 M50i, you're at the price of an Alpina B5 Touring. Which is a very roomy versatile 4WD car that happens to be able to do 200 miles per hour. Still, among its peers, the X6 has the most, a uh, striking design. Which is why even if we say don't buy it, you will if you want to. Then you can post-rationalize your decision by pointing out the great powertrains and mostly excellent cockpit ergonomics. It's also very easy to drive briskly whatever the road. Just not all quite as rewarding as we'd hoped. It might weigh two and a quarter tons with no one on board, but heck 530 brake horsepower can still impel the M50i forward at a fair rate. As demonstrated by a 0 to 62 time of 4.3 seconds. Provided you feel able to insulate yourself from the financial and environmental consequences of burning all this petrol, this V8 is the nicest thing about the X6. At 4.4 liters, it doesn't rely solely on the turbos for its heft and pickup. But when they have spun up, you're away to the races. It works well with the auto box or your own paddled inputs. The sound is interesting and enjoyable, and far more subtle than the X6 styling might have you expect. As the huge tires and anti-roll system imply, it corners flat and hard. If you like fairground rides, that might be your thing. We prefer to feel less of a passenger and more of a controlling agent, and that's where the M50i falls down. It goes where it's pointed, and delivers little feedback, but isn't open to subtle shifts of attitude via the throttle. Some other SUVs, including the KN and Range Rover Sport, do that better. In compensation, the four-wheel steering system is precise and predictable, they've recalibrated it, and on the X5 too, since we complained of its unprogressive nature in our first X5 review. The downside here is odd weighting of the wheel, it's light around the straight ahead and then weights up suddenly just after that. There's also some slight wobbliness at high autobahn speeds, as if you're in a crosswind, even when you aren't. Sorting the aero in this thing must have been a challenge, and possibly too much of one. 
The ride is generally not too stiff or sharp edged, but there's lots of lateral rocking, even though the anti-roll bars are released when you're going straight ahead. You also get some pogoing in the sports damper mode. Still, nothing unacceptable. The driver assist and lane keeping systems are at a high level and work pretty smoothly. The interfaces for switching and configuring them are also pretty straightforward once after you've used them once. In some cars you risk a crash as you dive into the anti-crashing menus. Despite the low roofline this is still a big car, and luxurious in the back as well as the front. Mind you if the rear passengers really matter, get a 7 Series. You'll have a nicer drive too. There are some cabin changes besides the X5, with more sweeping door casings and center console, but it's still clear as day you're in a close relative. All the controls and iDrive system are as per other recent BMWs. We don't like the illegible polygonal instruments, but BMW's brilliant head-up display eases that pain. We also love the fact you can still interact with the central screen via the large tactile rotary controller, and operate the climate via actual buttons, and also have a useful set of programmable shortcut hard keys.